Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about limits and infinity. And let's start with a definition and just understand what a horizontal asymptote is first. Um, and we're going to define a horizontal asymptote of a graph of a function uh, y equals f of x uh, to exist and be equal to y equals b if either the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is b or the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is b. And what do I mean by the limit as x goes to infinity? Well, what I mean is that as this function moves out towards infinity, like let me just draw a function here. Um, maybe it looks something like this. So as x gets bigger and bigger, is this function getting close to a y value? So if this is my function f of x, then if I ask the question, what's the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x? Well, what I'm saying is as x gets bigger and bigger, are the y values getting closer and closer to something? And in this case, you can see the y values are getting very, very small. And so this limit would be 0. In a similar way, I could ask, what's the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x? And what all that it means asking, what's the limit as x goes to negative infinity, is as the x values get more and more negative, is this getting close to a given value? And again, on this one, we're getting closer and closer to 0. So in this case, as x values get big, y values get small. As x values get very negative, y values get close to 0. So both of these limits would be 0 as x goes to infinity and negative infinity. Let's try one more real quick just to show you um, how this works. One more example. And that is if f of x is equal to x squared minus 3 over uh, 2x squared minus 1, uh, then what is the limit as x goes to infinity of this function of x squared minus 3 over 2x squared minus 1? All right. And the way that we go about finding a limit like this, well, first of all, we have to be a little bit careful because we can't just go around plugging in infinities. We have to be a little bit careful when plugging in infinity. Why? Well, if I plug in infinity here, notice I get infinity squared minus 3. And maybe we'd say, oh, well, I guess that's sort of infinity. And then on the bottom, I get 2 times infinity squared minus 1. I guess that's sort of infinity. So I get infinity divided by infinity. What is that? one? Is that three? I, I don't know. It's actually called an indeterminate form, and so I can't take the limit that way. But that doesn't mean I can't take this limit. And so our strategy for taking limits like this is find the highest power of x. Okay, and once I've found the highest power of x, I divide the top and the bottom by that highest power of x. In this case, the highest power of x is x squared. So I could say that that limit is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared minus 3 over x squared divided by 2x squared minus 1 over x squared. So I just divided the top and the bottom by the same number, which is really the same as multiplying by 1. So I haven't really changed anything. So now let's rewrite this, and this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared 
uh, divided by x squared minus 3 divided by x squared divided by 2x squared over x squared uh, minus 1 over x squared. All right, another way to write that would be that this is the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared divided by x squared, that's just 1. Uh, then minus 3 over x squared divided by uh, 2 x squared over x squared, or 2, minus 1 over x squared. And now the question is, what's the limit as x goes to infinity of 3 over x squared? Well, think about that for just a second. We've got 3, and it's divided by, x is never actually equal to infinity. We just say x goes to infinity. So let x get very big. If x is very big, 3 divided by a number that is super big is super small. So as x goes to infinity, 3 over x squared goes to 0. And the way I usually like to write that is I just put a little arrow in and tell myself that goes to 0 as x gets big. Also, 1 over x squared goes to 0 as x gets big. And so all that's left here is on top I have 1 minus 0. On the bottom, I have 2 minus 0, so that's just 1 over 2, and that's my limit. Okay, so if you're in this situation where you'd like to plug in infinity, that usually doesn't work. But what you can do is divide the top and the bottom of that fraction by the highest power of x, and that does work. Now, what if I were to go back to you here and say, okay, what is a horizontal asymptote of this function? Well, we just said that one of the limit as x goes to infinity of that function is a half. So that means that y equals 1 half is a horizontal asymptote of the function f of x in this case. All right. Uh, by the way, this is just interesting. If I were taking the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this function, everything would be exactly the same, and I would also get a half. That's special for this type of a function, this type of a function being a rational function, a polynomial divided by a polynomial. If you have a rational function, then the limit as x goes to infinity and the limit as x goes to negative infinity are the same if there is a horizontal asymptote. It can only have one. It's not the same if it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote necessarily because one side could go up to infinity and one side could go to negative infinity. Think about the function like uh, f of x equals x cubed or something like this. If you have f of x equals x cubed, the limit as x goes to infinity is infinity. The limit as x goes to negative infinity is negative infinity. But of course, this thing doesn't have any horizontal asymptotes. It's not getting close to anything as it goes out to infinity. So, But if it is getting close to something as it goes out to infinity, it gets close to the same thing from going to positive infinity and to negative infinity. Okay, So that's just for rational functions. All right, so that should give us what we need to get into some examples and see how we do more with these horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity.